So now we will uh, discuss some uh, properties of Noetherian modules. So let A be a ring and E an A module and E prime a submodule of E. So E is Noetherian then it is necessary and sufficient that is if and only if E prime and E modulo E prime be Noetherian. So E is Noetherian if and only if its submodules E prime and E over E prime are Noetherian. So first we will prove necessity so in this direction. So we will assume that E is Noetherian. So suppose E is Noetherian then the lattice of submodules of E prime this is isomorphic to the lattice of submodules of E contained within E prime. So the submodules in E prime are precisely those which are coming from E because E prime is a submodule of E. So therefore E prime is Noetherian by condition A or B. So condition A is that every non-empty family of submodules of instead of M we have E contains a maximal element. So whatever lattice you take in E prime it will have the same maximal element which is contained within uh, E. Or you can say every increasing sequence of modules uh, this is again for the relation of inclusion of submodules of E is stationary. So same thing. So because just the lattice of submodules of E prime are isomorphic to the lattice of submodules of E contained within E prime. And the similar case is for E over E prime. So again you start with E is Noetherian. So the lattice of submodules of E over E prime. So what are the lattice of submodules over E over E prime? They are precisely isomorphic to the lattice of submodules of E. So because we are talking always about lattice of submodules of E containing E prime. But lattice of submodules of E will anyway satisfy A or B because E is Noetherian. So therefore E over E prime is Noetherian again by A or B because this lattice of submodules of E will satisfy either A or B or so this will hold. So in the opposite direction is uh, slightly more effort. So now we are going to prove sufficiency that is this direction. So that is we are going to say that E prime and E modulo E prime are Noetherian and that would imply that E is Noetherian. So we start by saying E prime and E over E prime are Noetherian. So we start with an increasing sequence of submodules of E. So eventually our goal is to show that this sequence becomes stationary. It stabilizes after a certain value of n. Now we are saying E prime is Noetherian. So then there is an integer n0 such that this fn intersection with E prime is equal to fn plus 1 intersection with E prime. So after some uh, n greater or equal to n0 the sequence will stabilize so this fn intersection with e prime would stabilize precisely because e prime is Noetherian. Now same thing we'll apply to e over e prime so this is Noetherian so there is an integer n1 now so after n greater or equal to n1 we will have fn plus e prime over e prime is equal to fn plus 1 this plus e prime over e prime. So notice how we are dealing with E over E prime. So this will stabilize or you can say Fn plus E prime is equal to Fn plus 1 E prime for n greater or equal to n1. Now obviously we have to take n as the soup of n0 n1 and we will show that Fn becomes equal to Fn plus 1. In fact it suffices to show that Fn plus 1 lies within Fn because this is an increasing sequence so obviously we have Fn lies within Fn plus 1. In fact what we will show is that we will start with any element x in fn plus 1 and we will end up showing that this x lies within fn2 and that is the will be the end of the proof. So we have to go from here to here. So first we just copy this thing right here. So what does this mean? That means that there exists y in f of n so you have x and y so y lies within f of n, uh, so y is within f, or f of n, x lies within f of n plus 1, so obviously y also lies within f, and f of n plus 1. And then there exists z prime and z double prime and e prime such that this entire equation will hold again. 
So for fn plus 1, we put in x. For the first e prime, you put z prime. For this f of n, you have this element y picked up. And for e prime, you are pu putting this z double prime. So now put y on this side. So you get x minus y is z double prime minus z prime. And this will lie within fn plus 1 intersection e prime precisely because x minus y, both x and y lie within f of n plus 1. So x minus y would also lie within f of n plus 1. On the other hand, the z prime minus z prime, they lie within e prime. So this will lie within f n plus 1 intersection e prime because this portion lies within e prime and this portion lies within f of n plus 1. Now this is equal. So this is precisely this statement right here. So now we are using notarianness of e prime. So here in this equation we use the notarianness of uh, this e over e prime. So this was used in this equation. And this is coming from notarianness of E prime. So this is equal. So it must be the case that now X minus Y. So if this is equal, it must be the case that X minus Y and Y both belong to F of N. Because these two are equal. And this X minus Y lies within F of N plus 1 intersection E prime. So it has to lie within, within F of N now because of this equality. Now obviously Y lies within F of N. You are saying x minus y also lies within f of n. So their sum of these two terms also lies within f of n. So y, y cancels out. So x lies within f of n. And that's what we want to do, show. So therefore, we conclude that f of n plus 1 is equal to f of n for all n greater or equal to soup of n0, n1. And therefore, E is notarian by our condition B. Notice that our condition B is saying that every increasing sequence m of n, n greater or equal to 0, uh, for the relation of inclusion of submodules of M becomes stationary. So instead of M, we have E now. So, so this has become stationary. We have shown that F of N is equal to F of N plus 1. So let A be a ring and say we have E1, E2 all the way to E N be notarian A modules. So then the A module product like this, this is also notarian. So for n equals to 2 e1 may be identified with the submodule like this e1 times 0 of e1 times e2 and then the corresponding quotient is isomorphic to e2 or another way to put it is like you have the sequence uh, 0 e1 this injects into e1 over e2 and then you have surjective map here so obviously this we will set this we set up as e in our proposition this e and e prime we set up like this e1 as e prime and this will become e over e prime so you modulo e1 out you just get e2 so and uh, we know that uh, from the proposition now our assertion follows and the general case will be proved by induction so here e is notarian if and only if this e prime and e over e prime or E1 direct sum with E2 is notarian if and only if E1 and E2 are notarian. Just from the proposition, E is notarian if and only if E prime and E over E prime are notarian. So E1 to E and B notarian A modules, then the product would be notarian. So now corollary 2. So let A be a notarian ring and E an A module of finite type then E is a notarian module and therefore all its submodules are of finite type. So this is also easy to show, you just uh, follow the definition. So E is of finite type, that means the quotient of a free module of finite rank. So basically this is what it means to be a finite type. So this map is onto. So that means E is of the form A n modulo sum R. So it is of this form A n modulo R, n being the cardinality of the finite set of generators of E. Now this corollary therefore implies that A n is notarian, precisely because A is a notarian ring. So then you can take its copies uh, and you will get A n, which will be notarian. 
So since this is Noetherian and A is Noetherian, so so instead of uh, uh, E here, we can say that so here we can say it as A N, and then um, this combined with the proposition it implies that A N over R is Noetherian too. So that is it from Noetherian ring A, we constructed another Noetherian ring A N and from here we said that A N over R is Noetherian and uh, that is the end of the story and this is our finite type and this R comes from this rejective map so that means you have to have uh, modulo out with something. So this E has to be of the form A N modulo some R because of this rejectivity here.